you see that dude like I said, let those ladies be, you know that's wrong. Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of Effortless. Oh, so you're hosting this week. Hey, you told me I was. No, I told you that you were not. I'm Spiegel, he's Piddle. What's what? up everybody? You told me I was. Well, this year's off to a great start. I love it? it. Happy 2016, everybody. And we're going to talk about some great stuff today. We're going to start with like the best news of all, right? Yeah, we are going to unveil. So we, so I promised a Christmas episode, right? And it just didn't happen because whatever. And then, <laughs> and then uh, Piddle and I both got sick. So we weren't able to do a show last week. Um, so yeah. And here we are. We're back. And uh, we got some good stuff. And we're going to start by revealing our number one game of all time for us. Yes. Each of our number one games of all time. We already did our 50 through number two. So if you missed and it, right go now back. We're gonna do, right now we're going to like recap everything for you. Here it is. Okay, time for number one. <laughs> yep. I liked your list, by the way. Great choices. Yeah, it was really good. I really liked uh, 36. 36 was a really good choice. For me, it was uh, 24. Ooh, your 24 was really good. Okay, so would you like to go go with yours first? Your number one, Spiegel? This show sucks. Oh, uh, what, what was... Oh, yeah, number one. Um, yeah, okay, I'll do mine. So I, I prefaced this last week by saying... Or the last show by saying that uh, anyone who really knows me is like already... They already know what the game is. Uh, but I'll go ahead and reveal it dramatically anyway. My number one game is... Can I get a drum roll, please? A drum roll sound effect. But up, but up. No, I, no, I can't. Psh. Majora's Mask 3D on 3DS. Um, the remake of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask that came out early last year in February. Fantastic remake. Um, I was super excited to play it for the first time. I got the Majora's Mask 3DS and everything. Uh, popped that game right in. Just basically marathoned it for two days. And I, I came out thinking, wow, they really did a fantastic job with this remake. They fixed basically all the problems of the original. Uh, made it super accessible for new people. People that didn't like the game originally came into Majora's Mask 3D with like a fresh mindset, thinking, "Okay, I'm gonna like try to, I'm really gonna try to like this game." And most people I feel yeah. like came out did like, they did like it. Um, so I think they did a fantastic job with the remake. It looks great on the 3DS. Uh, the using the C stick on the new 3DS for the camera is fantastic. Um, and I just Lucky I love everything guy. about. I love everything about this game. Uh, I've said it a million times on this show. I don't really need to go into it, why Majora's Mask is so good. But the remake is just spectacular. They did a fantastic job. Uh, it's my number one game of all time, just barely beating out Metroid Prime. And it's it's fluid, right? So it's always changing. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't wait to see where it is next year. It's either going to be one or two, probably. So, uh, But man, it's such a good game. You have to play Majora's Mask if you've never played it before. To be fair, it is a game that is hard to get into when you first start playing it it's it, very intimidating right yeah and that yeah. even even now i or with the re-release i saw a lot of complaints about that three-day time system and people just having difficulties working around it so i mean it's it's like anything new at first it, you're just not used to it you don't really it's hard to like something that you're not used to um that can be frustrating at times but if you adapt to it and you give to yourself some time to get used to it you're gonna love it pedal what is your number one game of all time oh man i feel like so many people must know this it is the great chrono trigger or chrono trigger chrono trigger i don't know how you say it i did not play it until uh like three or probably like three years into 2000 i think it was like 2003 2002 so i played it well after it released I had had a lot of other experience with different RPGs by that time, and it still just absolutely blew me away. It was one of the first RPGs that really made heavy use of uh, late motifs for the music, so every character had their own theme. Um, the world had its own theme. The different, whenever like there were references to uh, certain things, the music always changed, so the music was always very appropriate for the scene, it set the tone. Uh, the characters, again, they just had a lot of life to them. And I, I always talked about with my previous top 10 that for me it's all about like characters, sense of discovery and exploration. Uh, and that was there in Chrono Trigger. You had great characters, really, really memorable characters. 
he had a fantastic story that to this day I'm amazed at how well all the various parts of the story end up weaving together. I'm you keep playing the game and it's just like more and more adds up and you're just blown away and the way you can change the outcome of things there's 13 different endings I believe uh, and I don't know just so few games have the amount of depth that Chrono Trigger has so few games have the character cast uh, the music is still considered one of the best soundtracks of all time in gaming uh, the it was like Yasunori Mitsuda's very first time really taking the helm behind a game with its music and like he just poured everything he had into that game uh he he like had music like he, he would get stuck and just have mind blocks or writer's block and he would talk about how he just like would dream a song and it'd be like oh boom that's perfect i'm putting it in the game so and then there's just so many other good people that worked on it like nobuo, Oe, Ue, eh, nobuo <laughs> uematsu the final fantasy uh composer helped out with like 10 songs um they had akira toriyama who's the re or the guy who does the drawings for dragon ball or uh, dragon quest if you, if you prefer you had hironobu sakaguchi who created Final Fantasy, essentially. He helped out with the game. They just had this all-star cast of uh, all sorts of big names working on this game. And I don't know that any other game will have that kind of talent come together and work on it again. I mean, maybe it'll happen, but for me, it hasn't happened yet. So Chrono Trigger is definitely my number one game yeah. of all time. I've never played Chrono Trigger all the way through. It's going to happen this year though because I know I know how big it is and I know how big of a deal it, it is in the RPG community. So it's actually kind of surprising I haven't played it yet given my penchant for loving RPGs, but I'll definitely get there this year. I promise. All right. So speaking of great great games, we are going to go on Piddle's quest for mobile glory once oh, more man. to open up 2016. For all you new listeners out there, all 7,000 of you, we are, we, well, Piddle has been on a quest, a, a very important quest, to find a good, free mobile game. And we don't just mean a game that's fun, right? It's a game that has to have actual, like, content in it. Is that? It? Yeah. I'm looking for good content, good depth. It's just, like, a ton of fun that I can't put down. And, so, yeah, it's just something I keep going back to. We've talked about it being a little bit unfair to look for a free game that has that kind of depth, but um, yeah, it is what it is. Too bad. So what? It is what it is. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the platform, right? Everybody wants free on mobile games. That's what people want. Yep. I've actually started to look at some paid games, but eh, uh, maybe another yeah, time. Yeah, I don't want to pay. I don't so, want to pay for something on my phone. I, I don't <laughs> even want to play on my phone. Period. So like, why would I want to pay see, for it? We've, we've all been spoiled by free-to-play, even though free-to-play is awful. Yeah. All right. So what was your game this so, week? So my game this last Oh, this was a recommendation. Two weeks was a recommendation from Voyager G0. Super, so, super uh, fan. Thank you Effortless for the super recommendation. Fan. Love you, man. You're fantastic. And I played Platform Panic um, for Android. I, I don't know if it, it might be on iOS as well. And it was... Awful. It was a fun little game i'll admit it it was fun it it's sort of a i mean it's a platformer as the as the name implies and you sort of swipe up to jump or you swipe side to side to like change direction um and there's a bunch of it's sort of like a randomly generated layout where you go from one room to the next room and have to avoid whatever obstacles are in that room, either by jumping or moving or changing directions. So it's pretty simple, as you as you can tell. It's just like you're either going right or left or you're jumping. And it's challenging. Uh, it has a good amount of fun to it. But as with all mobile games, 
it's just a little bit I mean it's the same thing over and over um it gets harder and harder as you play my issue with it is like any endless runner that's out there what eventually what it eventually comes down to is how quickly can you react and since because it's At that all random point, it's not a game anymore it's just it's yeah a, it, it exists and it's like okay because there's no like if there's no strategy to it then why are you kind of doing it i i mean like there's strategy but like again it's if you enter a new room and you have to quickly figure out what you're going to do okay am i going to jump am i going to mo- like change directions very quickly it it pretty much comes down to like what are you going to do at, as soon as you enter a new room and that that's my issue it's like with endless runners eventually it's just like okay can you react quick enough nope you can't react quick enough so you die and there's no way to like well i'm going to adapt for the next time that doesn't happen because it's random if it wasn't random you could say like okay well next time i get to this area i know i'm gonna like i'm gonna be ready i'm gonna be prepared i'm gonna do things differently that's yeah it's just not the case with this so although it's fun it is again sort of like a shallow experience um the quest but thank you voyager g0 it is it is one of the better mobile games that i have played so, so thank that you. counts for something, um, right? Keep the suggestions yeah. coming, everybody. We want more bad mobile games for Fiddle to play. So for me, it's still a three out of five, but I'm I'm searching. Getting closer to a four. Closer. Yeah. yeah. It, it it is close to a four out of five. It's just again, I just can't handle that random element of mobile gaming with those endless runners. Okay. Where it's just like, okay, can you react or not? No, you can't react. I. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm getting older. My my reflexes <laughs> are nearly, slowing down. Yeah. Can't process it quick enough. Oh man. So let's let's move on. Uh, so we have some interesting news uh, to report to you today, and that is that um, over the past year, since uh, since about April, since the first episode we've ever done of this show, uh, Piddle and I have been on a uh, another type of quest, a quest to clear our backlogs of all the crap that just inundates us on a daily basis and is and we're basically just drowning in games so yes we needed to do something about that so we started a project where we were going to play 52 games in 52 weeks to help us clear our backlogs now before i go any further i would like to say that i believe this project has been a phenomenal success uh i love as of the end of the year i had beaten 46 games since april when we started uh, definitely, we started about a quarter of the way. Well, we started exactly a quarter of the way into the right. year, just so you know. Yeah. Um, so we decided that in the interest of just keeping things consistent and easier to track, we were going to start over. Uh, and the reason I let off with look at all the games I beat was because I didn't want people to think that we were just doing a cop out like, oh, they're not going to make it. So they're just giving up and starting over. That's not really what we're doing because we were both either on pace or like way ahead of pace in my case yes we were 39 weeks or 39 weeks into the year um you had beaten 40 games right i beat 39 games yeah so you were right on pace and i was above pace so basically i think we can consider it a success and just kind of start over because what we were on pace yeah so and another reason we're starting over is so that you can join us this year and it's just 52 games 52 weeks you got to beat 52 games by the end of the year. Whatever game you're currently working on, make it your first game. Yep. Because we're, we are, we're sort of going to release this a week into the year. So. And you know who else is doing a 52-52 this year, Piddle? Mm-hmm. Is uh, my wife. She's actually doing a 52-52, which I'm very proud of her for. Q- I love QJ, it. Because she, is, uh, she has never really been into games. But she was like, you know what? I'm going to get into games, and I'm going to play 52 games with you guys this year. And I'm like, oh, okay, honey, good luck. Good luck. You know, yeah. kind of in a teasing fashion. But I really think she's going to try to do this. Like, I think she's she's going to go crazy, but she's I think she might be able to do it. She's, like, outdoing us because isn't she also reading 52 books She's reading 52 year? books. She's going to be watching 52 movies. She's going to do, oh my goodness. like, 52 push-ups a day. I don't know. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um 52 push-ups, 52 weeks. Yeah, one push-up start, a day. Start with one. One push-up a week. Oh, man. Add one every week. Yeah. Oh, I started doing Wii Fit again, by the way. Like, I know everyone's like, oh, New Year's resolutions. What a bunch of crap. 
but like I'm actually gonna I'm I'm gonna follow through again this year. I've done it in the past. I've lost weight for my New Year's resolution, um, in the past. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lose so 52 quick, pounds in 52 weeks. Real quick, uh, what were the last games that you beat? I don't know. For your I don't 46. Know. Um, you don't even no, remember. I, I remember one of them because well because one of them counts for my 52 52 this year because I beat it on uh, I beat it on January 1st even though I spent the majority of December playing it. Um, Perfect. Which was uh, the Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening on uh, I, I played it on 3DS because I had a download, but um, it was originally on Game Boy Color. Uh, what a good game! That's a really solid little Zelda game you got on the handheld there. First ever handheld it Zelda really game. It really is. Um, it plays. I've said this like a combination of the Legend of Zelda plus a Link to the Past, so it's like a combination of the two, and it works out really well. It's a it's a gorgeous game to look at. I love the sprites. Um, they're all fantastic. Um, there's a few cryptic things in it that you know the the old Legend of Zelda games had that was that are like really irritating, but but once you can get all, past all that, it's a really solid game. A little too much backtracking for my taste, because um, it's not really that fun to go through an overworld made up of like a hundred. It was tiny really screens. the first. It was really the first Zelda game that really sort of locked off different parts of the overworld with items. Yeah, I didn't care for that. Not not because it was. Not because I didn't like the linearity of it, but just because I didn't like how I had to keep going back to areas and like, oh, now you can go a little bit farther. It's like in Phantom Hourglass, how every time you'd go a little farther, you'd have to go back and you'd have to go down another level into that into the, into the Temple of the Ocean King. And it's just like, I don't want to do this. And Link's Awakening had a little bit of that. But overall, I, I really enjoyed my experience. The dungeons are just fantastic. I gave the game a four out of five. Um, because those little things drag it down a little bit. I like the trading sequence a lot in the game too. Uh, you know, you know the trading sequence. Yes. Where you trade like a pineapple for a can of dog food, and you know, yeah. just all the weird stuff that happens. It, the game's also really funny it too. It's like the first Zelda game to really feature humor in it. Um, lots of funny characters. Lots of adult things are going on in the game too. Uh, like I, I, I noticed some innuendos in the game, and I was like, geez, I can't believe they got away with that. But uh, good stuff. Great game. Yeah, why not? Right, so Disney gets away with yeah, it. Yeah, four out of five. Good, good score. Good game. Um, so you had a you had so, a couple games, and I'm counting that for my first game of fifty two fifty two this year. Uh, and you have yeah, you beat it on the first. Yeah. So and you have one game for fifty two. So here, what I finished last week was or last year for my thirty eight and thirty nine game, thirty ninth was Super Mario Maker. Um, I mean. I just sort of considered it beaten. I had done all the 10 Mario challenges. Uh, I had beaten the Nintendo World Championship level. You made your own level. I made my own level, and, I mean, I I played through a few hundred Mario challenges. So I feel like I've, got a, I've gotten a lot out of the game already. Did you want to advertise your level? pretty much everything it had to offer. Did what? you want to advertise your level on uh, on our show and, like, Oh yes, so, uh, so we'll, just, we'll put the um, we'll put the code in the description or whatever. Yeah, I have a, I mean, I have like two variations of it, but I'll just give you, I'll give you guys my final form of the level that I came up with, and I don't know, it's it's challenging, it's pretty challenging, but it's not overly challenging. Um, I think it's a little bit more than Super Mario World difficulty, a little bit, but not unreasonably hard. So, yeah, take a look at it. We'll put it in the bottom or in the comments <laughs> or description. Okay. Anyway, so uh, other yeah. game I beat was uh, VVVVVV for Come again? PC. VVVVVVV. It's pronounced Six Vs. Yes. It's a Steam game originally. I don't know if it's on anything else It actually, it was on, it's on Wii U, I think, and it might be on 3DS. Oh, Good deal. It, yeah, I just got it on Steam because it was like a buck fifty. How you know I what else was up? really cheap on Steam? Sorry to get off track, but I bought Psychonauts yesterday for a dollar. Freaking Psychonauts nice. for a dollar. I saw it for a dollar, but I had already tried to play it, and it just it didn't do much for me. Okay, fair enough. Personally, I think I got it from like IGN for free one time. I also bought Undertale, so you'll be hearing about that in the weeks to come. Well, as if you as yes. if you guys haven't heard enough about Undertale in the last month and a half. I gave it a four out of five, so that's my, and I I want to just move it down since the the fans are going so. It's completely obnoxious, isn't it? It's it's kind of 
I mean, I got I got like the good endings too. So I, oh, I I just don't get it. When was the last time a I game mean, was released that people were just completely obsessed with? It's really cute and it has a lot of depth and it's something like fresh and new. But you know me, I'm just like fresh and new isn't enough for me. It needs to have like really really good depth, or I'm not depth. Um, exploration for me, exploration. Yeah, and like Under Undertale doesn't have that. It has. It has depth, yes, and like the various ways that you can play it, and like all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. I, I know about um, scientist or whatever that is sort of like a, a secret in the game, but it's just I don't know. Okay, stop, I, stop. It's very meta. We're getting back on whatever. track. Yeah. So it's a game where it's it's just a simple platformer game. Uh, it's not that long. I actually beat it twice though, and I did. I did all the challenges. Um, I didn't get like perfect scores or anything. I didn't do it the, like the no depth playthrough because I don't know. I'm just not that masochistic to myself. So I played it. it pr pretty much how it works um, is you can flip your character. So your character, your 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 platformer, he's either on the ground, standing on the ground, or he's standing on the ceiling. And um, so there's no jump button. It's just like if you're going to avoid something, you're going to flip and go onto the ceiling, or you're going to flip back and go back onto the ground. And it's it's really challenging, but very forgiving with all the checkpoints it has. Uh, so it's not, it's not like impossible, I think, for anybody to beat. You might get frustrated at points. Um, I think there was a point where I died. Like there was, I think the room I died the most in, I died like 75 times. So there's that the gra or the gravitron by the way is the room that just sort of did me in and I hate that room hate it so much but other than that like really really fun little game definitely worth playing I'd give it a 4 out of 5 if I didn't give my review for Super Mario Maker I think I forgot it I don't think you did I'd also yeah. give Super Mario Maker a 4 out of 5 nice. like they're great games not like masterpieces but really really fun and worth worth playing super mario maker is like it gets such a raw deal because i can't give it a four because nintendo didn't make it like i legitimately don't <laughs> like most of the levels that i play in that game so how can i give it a four with good conscience i just i you know i haven't reviewed it yet because i'm not i'm not quote unquote done with it i still have a lot of stuff i want to do but um i just i don't enjoy it most of the time when i play it which is a shame i want to like it it has some great content like some just or I should say masterful content on it. But my issues with it is the level size is too small. Like there I have the opposite problem. I think people make levels too big. I think they go insane. I think they like create the giant world and they create a giant sub world. I'm like, I don't want to play all this. I don't have time. Huh, yeah. Well they they make you like play th that that's sort of how they artificially extend the length and I don't I don't know. Some people get too carried away. And, Some I mean, people. Them. Everyone gets carried away. Look! But, look at my look at my awesome don't move level. Look at how cool it is. Look! Oh, I'm gonna make another one. Oh, now everyone's making them. Oh, now they're the only ones that they show. They are up. the worst. Pisses me off. <laughs> okay. And that, that's my issue with Super Mario Maker is the the filters to play the game. I I don't know. I I sort of expected to get more like Super Mario World quality levels. Um, and yeah, I knew that there was gonna be a lot of crap, but the issue is, is there's like no way to filter out the crap. Yeah, no, like, I mean, you, you can just, always swipe, but like, I don't wanna do that. Just like, give me the good levels. So that that's like the major issue with it. One of my other big issues is the great level creators. Like if I found a level creator that created the perfect levels that just really speak to me in the way that I like to like the things I like about Mario games and the things I like about Mario games is that they don't play themselves <laughs> and I don't just hold the run button and the rights and if there are puzzles it's just like little clever one-off puzzles to find a secret exit that's what I like about Mario games <laughs> that's like that's just it's like it doesn't even exist in Mario Maker because of the way that everything is filtered. So the like, search feature it's a four is just, five for it's me not because, a search feature. It's dreadful. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. It's a four out of five for me because 
sometimes I'll find something that's awesome and it just totally speaks to me and I love it. And the tool set is amazing. Making your own levels is surprisingly easy and fun. Yes, I will agree with that. Although I have not made a good level yet. But yeah, like the filters aren't there. And then like, yeah, if, if somebody creates or if there's a good world creator or yeah, person who creates great levels, I think people need the option to create whole worlds, like create their own complete Mario game. I'm talking like world one through eight. If somebody, if somebody like really loves making levels that much and has the talent that, and people keep playing their levels, I feel like you should be able to create more levels and create like entire worlds. I would love to play through like, I like, I would love to play through Piddle's world one. I, th- I think that'd yeah. be really cool, but that's not an option. You can just play one level. It's not at a time. an option. Yeah, you'd, you'd have to play one of, each of my levels at one at a time. Um, and, and the issue with that is, it makes coins completely irrelevant. It makes one ups completely irrelevant. Oh look, you got to the end of the level. Hey, I'm gonna make like twenty different blocks just spew out coins, and then like another twenty blocks give you a bunch of one ups, and it's like, okay, I only get to carry over three of those one-ups that I'm going to get to the next level at the, like it's pointless. There's, there's no reason. Yeah. Whereas if somebody can create worlds, they can say like, okay, like I'm going to make the first few levels easier. You're going to want to collect more coins because then you're going to be able to get further in my later levels, which are harder. That's just not the case here. Yeah. So, um, and you know what? We need to stop talking about it cause we have a lot yeah. more to cover. Um, yeah. And this is just my stuff from last year. Yeah. So, yeah, Super Mario Maker, four out of five. For this year, my number one game that I've beaten this first week is Super Mario World, which is way better than Super Mario Maker. So a lot of the Going stuff that back. you said about Mario Maker actually is in Mario World, and it's amazing because that's a fantastic game. It is such a great game. I didn't I didn't 100% it this time. Usually when I play Super Mario World, I 100% it, but like since I've been trying to go through, or since we're doing 52-52, I don't want to get caught up on one game too long so i played all the way through it i played like the levels i wanted wanted to i like did whatever uh secrets i felt like doing i finished up by doing the special levels which are spectacular um and radical and tubular and do you not remember those are the names of all the levels no i i what i don't oh I, my sorry goodness. i zoned out i i wasn't listening what <laughs> Play Super Mario World again. Yes. Um, and it's it's amazing. Like, the level I made in Super Mario Maker, I didn't think it was that hard, but nobody beat it. And I was like, what is going on here? And I'm noticing that all the levels that get, that get stars in Super Mario Maker are incredibly easy. And anything that's sort of harder, like, is... Do you know why? Like, nobody beats it and nobody gives it stars unless it's one of the ultra, ultra, ultra hard levels that only, like... Point zero zero one percent of people have beaten. Do you know why that is? Why? Because they let kids play this game. Yeah. Stupid well, kids ruining thing. everything as usual. That's the thing. It's like kids these days, they like don't even know how to play games because I'm playing Super Mario World and I'm like, oh my gosh, these levels are harder than my level. <laughs> and I'm like, so like if these levels in Super Mario World are harder than my level, what would kids today do if they were... Like, if they got Super Mario World. You know, everybody in the world is always like, oh, kids are great. They're the future of America. Well, you know what? I think we should just stop having kids. Like, I think we should put a ban on children. I feel like there should be no... Like, if if this was the last generation of humankind, I'm totally fine with it. Like, we don't need to go any farther. We've already... We've mastered video games, right? Like, they already made Metroid Prime and Resident Evil. Like, so they're not going to be any better games made than that. So... (laughs) Right, so they like we don't even need to have kids anymore. We should just stop now, and that's it. And then let the world end, and that you know it'd be fine. So I don't know. Yeah, playing Super Mario World. So coming back to Super Mario, sort of agree with you. Um, playing Super Mario World, it reminds me of why I wanted Super Mario Maker in the first place, and it just exacerbates the flaws with Super Mario Maker because it's so good and. There's so much, like, quality depth to it. It's still, I still have to put it behind Super Mario Brothers 3 for, for me overall because and Super Mario Brothers 3 is just more accessible. It's 
such a great game. Five out of five. Five out of five. Definitely. Five definitely, out of five. Definitely. Masterful. Masterpiece. Uh, all right. Um, so we have a lot to get to in this. I know I know. everyone's like, oh, is yeah. the episode over yet? Jeez, this is long. Um, we have a lot to hey, get to. Hey, we're only a half hour in. Oh, by the way, remember, tell us what game you're playing. Tell us what your first game of the year is. Yeah, I want I want more of you, you guys. I want more of you guys to do this 52, 52 this year. It's very ex- do it with us. It's very accessible. It's a new year. Yeah, we just started. Make it your New Year's resolution. We're not even a week in yet. You guys can beat some cheapy little quick game. You're probably already playing a game. Just count it. And just so you know, for the the rules that we have put in place for ourselves, you can follow them if you want. You don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, we've decided that twenty five percent of the games we play can be replays. Yeah, so, so thirteen like, games for us. We both replayed a game. You replayed Link's Awakening. I replayed Super Mario yes. World. So um, since it's 25%, that means 13 games that you can replay. The other 39 need to be brand new games so you can just knock out your backlog if you have one. Or I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if you don't have that many games, games, if you don't have that many games you haven't played, I, then I don't know. Buy more. You need to buy more games, right? I've got like fifth, I've got yeah. 1,500 games in my house. I need to play them all, so... Go get some Steam games yeah. on Steam sales. Seriously. You could get 52 games for $52, essentially. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, so so yeah, so that that's that. So now that's the first half of the show, and then we're going to go to our mega, like, super awesome second half, which is we are going to be looking ahead to 2016, and how bad does this year look for video games? It looks horrible. I know, right? There are... There, there are going to be common themes this year, I think. Everyone, everyone's getting all excited about these games, and I'm like, these games are all going to be awful. <laughs> One of the common themes, I think, is just going to be more downloadable content, more microtransactions, more... Uh, more remakes. M- more booster packs in games. I don't know. Do, do you know like what the obsession is with cards and video games now? It's all, Hearth- is- it's all Hearthstone's fault. And Gwent. And, and, and Gwen and Yu-Gi-Oh, the Yu-Gi-Oh hey, hey. games on DS. <laughs> well, I'm talking more like the cards that give you like boosts, especially in multiplayer games. Oh my goodness! Oh, it's like it's in Halo Five, it's in Call of Duty, it's in I, I don't know. It's, I think it's probably Battlefront too. I don't People know. like it's in cards. Now. Cards are fun. I they gave me cards for Christmas. You know, like I, I cards are nice. You know, who doesn't like cards? I don't know. Y- you know what? Like at this rate, it's going to be in Pokemon too. You're going to have your regular you have Pokemon, Pokemon and then you have games, Pokemon cards, <laughs> and then you're going to have in the Pokemon games the Pokemon trading card game. You know, so the, first you can battle your Pokemon, and then you can pull out your Pokemon cards and battle the like same. Like when all your Pokemon with- are dead, you're like, well, that we haven't resolved our conflict. We should play cards. <laughs> you know, hey, did yep. you ever play the Pokemon trading card game on uh, Game Boy Color? Uh, no, I played it with like my friends. It's on 3DS. You should download it. It's a really nice game. Um, it's like five bucks. It's so good. It, it mm. just it, it takes all those like little battling elements and it, like it turns it into a game where you can collect all the cards. It's really fun. You build your own deck. It's great. Um, highly recommended. Uh, all right. I was actually it was it was in my top 50 last year. It got kicked out this year, unfortunately, but Aww. it'll be in my top hundred this year because we are doing the top hundred. But now we need to yeah, look, we okay. Are. So we're gonna look ahead to 2016 and stop getting distracted. Maybe. Um, so, we're, so we're going to talk about all the games coming out, right? Yeah, we're just going to go over these games and be like, oh, that's going to suck or that that's going to be cool. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't look like 2016 is going to be as good of a year as people think it's going to be. Um, but that's mostly just because we're being hyper negative about everything. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah. So January is a nothing month. There's one game that comes out in January. It's called Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. It's on 3DS. Uh, a lot of people seem to be being very negative about it i've seen nothing that makes me want to be negative about this game i love mario and luigi i love paper mario so it's got to be good right i think people are just sort of tired of paper mario games i think people are tired of mario and luigi games more than anything the last one came out in 2013 dream team right yeah they come out all the time but they're i mean they're they're good. good yeah like bowser's bowser's inside story wasn't great uh, but Partners in Time was fantastic. I haven't played Dream Team yet, so I'm going to do that before. Uh, that'll probably be the next 3DS game I play, actually, because i am got I got to play it before I play Paper Jam. Um, so then moving on, uh, February. What? Are the, what oh, yeah, speaking of uh, themes of 2016, here is a theme for 2016. 
remade games or re-released games. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of remakes this year. We like, are opening up February with Gravity Rush Remastered. Okay, so uh, let me let me put out my criteria just so that we're all clear on like what I'm okay with as far as remakes. Because I'm not totally against remakes. I think remakes can be good if they are released at the right time on the right platform. I think Twilight Princess is very appropriate. It's a 10-year-old game that was never in HD. People love that game. Not not Zelda fans, but other people love that game. So I think it's a good one to re-release. Uh, plus, it's content for Nintendo, which Nintendo just needs. Um, you have Resident Evil Zero. Resident Evil Zero I'm okay with because it's an old game that deserves an HD remake. It's not a very good-looking game, so I think it would look much better in HD. Uh, I'm also okay with games like Majora's Mask being ported to the 3DS because it's like... This is an old game that a lot of kids never got to experience. So basically, my number one criteria is, is it an old game that you can't really get any other way? That's it. Um, Gravity Rush, I'm okay with because it's on Vita, and it's coming to PS4. Nobody has a Vita. Everyone yeah. has a PS4. Uh, Everybody and, should have a Vita, yeah, but you know. Yeah, but no. Uh, but Gravity Rush, I've not played it. I own it. I'm going to play it soon. Um, I understand it's a pretty good game. It's a good adventure game, uh, so I have no problem with them re-releasing it. All right, moving on. Yes. We also have Unravel coming out in February. If you remember uh, the un the uh, the EA press conference from last E3, they revealed Unravel, and this poor, shaking guy came out on the stage, and he showed off his amazing-looking game, and this game looks really cool. Uh, it's the one game I'm looking forward to from EA this year. Can't wait to buy it. Oh, man. Puzzle platformer. I just want to go off on my tangent right now. but No, no, no go. I'm go, not go going ahead. to yet. Go ahead. Nope, not yet. Okay. Uh, then we've got Mighty Number no. Nine coming out, which is a big one. It's on everything. I'm not really interested. Yeah, it got coming out for everything. It got delayed uh, from like September because they ran into problems with like the online or something. Yeah. One of the big uh, Kickstarter games coming out this year. Yeah. Then you have Street Fighter Five finally coming out. Uh, the beta has been out for a while. Ever. Or came out a while yeah. ago. Yeah. I'm not really interested because uh, I don't like fighting games, but it's cool that they're doing the cross-platform thing where you can play PS4 gamers yeah, can they play are. against PC gamers. I think that's cool. Capcom is really pushing Street Fighter V. Um, they're trying to get away from Street Fighter Four just because they want people to buy Street Fighter V. So some some fans are a little unhappy that they're trying to push four to the background. Everyone's but. gonna hate five, right? Like that's a that's a consensus. No matter how good it is, everyone's gonna hate it. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, then you got Fire Emblem Fates coming out in February as well. A lot of you Nintendo guys are really interested in this one. I'm, re I'm really not. I, I We love our waifu simulators. <laughs> uh, so then we got Far Cry Primal coming out. Um, Ugh. Have you seen footage of this game? It's, it's like a unique, cool kind of concept that, like, hey, Caveman Day is cool. So, okay, and you're taking everything from Far Cry. So everything that makes Far Cry fun, right? The guns and the explosions and the, you know, the, the foreign lands and everything. You're taking all that away. So how is this possibly going to be a good game? It looks terrible. I think it looks just awful, and I'm not interested in It's because in I think it puts more of the focus on the animals rather than the, um, like, Explosions. Man on man combat, yeah. So you're taking away explosions and you're putting in animals. Okay, animals are boring. Animal Planet's ratings are in the tank. No one's interested in animals. I don't care about animals. <laughs> I hate animals, hey. I hate children, and I hate remakes. Hey, That's like Ark Survival Evolved has been a huge game this last year. One of the top grossing games on the PC, actually. People like that stuff. Come on. So Mega Man Legacy Collection comes out on the same day, February twenty third. This is on. This is actually on everything. I think. I don't think it's. Yeah, just on we've 3DS. all played it before. Well, it's stupid because it's like here's a game that's forty bucks that you can buy on the eShop for thirty total because it's Mega Man yeah, one through insane. six. Yeah, it's. I, I don't get it, but you know whatever. People will be suckered. It makes no it. sense. And like, I don't understand why they didn't. If it's going to be the Legacy Collection, include one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, and ten. Okay, include all the eight bit style ones, not just one through six that's ridiculous yeah preposterous okay plants vs zombies garden warfare 2 the first one was really good uh i guess I, I don't know i'm not interested in this at all at all i i don't know i'm i'm done with plants vs zombies i've been done with it for like five years so uh, a couple days later pokemon red blue and yellow are getting a re-release on the 3ds eShop. i'm super excited about this i haven't played pokemon yellow in 15 years probably Moving on, because we have, we have just too much to go through. Heavy Rain, PS4, another remake. Then Twilight Princess HD, another remake. We need to stop Yay. on Heavy Rain. 
Why are they remaking Heavy Rain for PS4? Why? I don't know. Because they're doing that with everything. Uh, then we've got Tom Clancy's The Division coming out, which, I don't know, it's the first big shooter game. People I are guess. really excited about this, and I'm like, I don't get it. I, I really don't get Tom Clancy games. I don't understand the popularity at all. I, I think they're boring. They, I'm just done with shooting game, like shooting um, teamwork games. Period. Yeah, right now, yeah. I'm just, I don't know. It's gonna be, I'm a, done it's gonna be right the now. like probably the first big release of the year though. It's gonna be very popular. It probably will be. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, then you got Hitman coming out in March. Yawn. Not interested. Uh, the Hyrule Warriors uh, port to the 3DS. It has Linkle in it, so I'm still jury's out for me. I got I got to see the reviews first. It has Linkle in it, so yeah, that's March 25th. Linkle, stop saying Linkle. <laughs> hey, that's that's why everybody's buying it. Linkle, hot. Uh, Quantum Break is coming out April. Maybe if it doesn't get delayed again. Yeah, and again Anything and again. You want to say about it? No, I don't really know much about it. Honestly, it's an Xbox One exclusive, which is cool, but I really don't know enough about it to make a statement. Honestly, I don't know much about it either. I don't know. I just haven't seen much about it. It's it hasn't probably going to flop, right? Pushed. I mean, it's not going to be like a big... Considering how little has been advertised about They've it. They've done a I... really poor job hyping it up if it's if it's anything better I than average. Probably one of the huge releases, Dark Souls 3. Also coming out in April. A lot of people are very excited about that one. April twelfth yeah. for Dark Souls three. Also on April twelfth. Every everybody that has an Xbox One is just like, oh, finally, because I don't have Bat or Bloodborne on my because they don't have a PlayStation Four. Yeah. So. Um, also on April twelfth, a PS Four exclusive, which is a, technically a remake. It's Ratchet and Clank on PS Four. It's not a remake. It's kind of a remake. It's not a remake. It's completely different. It just has the Ratchet and Clank name. I'm sort of bummed that it doesn't have a clever little um, subtitle. Yeah, they ran out of ideas, though. Like, up your arsenal or a crack in <laughs> That's time. That's so inappropriate. Or... How could they ever get away with something like that? I love it. I love it. Quest for Booty. That's one of my favorite ones. That's terrible. Love it. I, mean, I love it, so, but yeah, it's, it's terrible. Ratchet and Clank, the game based on the movie, based on the game. Oh, you know what? We didn't mention uh, Dead or Alive Extreme 2 is coming out in, uh, in uh, February for Vita and PS4. D uh, Extreme 3, excuse me. Oh. So go uh, play some cares? beach who volleyball. Cares? Actually, I think, it's only, cares? I think it's only coming out in Japan, so you have to import it. But The beach volleyball portion is probably going to suck. Yep. Even though it should be the best part, because the first Dead or Alive Extreme game is actually a great little volleyball game. Are you serious? It it is a fun little volleyball game, and then like it just went all downhill with Dead or Alive Extreme too. Too many butt bumping mini games. Yeah, af yeah. After that, it turned into a bunch of like stupid mini games that were not fun, and yeah. Depends so, on your definition of fun. Uh, on April twenty second, Star Fox Zero is coming out on Wii U. Um, so yeah, Chris I, is gonna love that. You're one. really excited about this one too, right? I just, I'm dying for a new Star Fox, and I think it's, I expect it to be good for like a couple reasons. One, Platinum Games. Two, they actually delayed it. So yeah, I mean, you made a really good point when you were like, in order for this game to be bad, you have to lose a number of bets. Which is one, Nintendo makes bad games. Two, Platinum makes bad games. Three, a delay is bad. And I'm like, that's a really good point. Uh, three really good points, in fact. That yeah. those companies don't make bad games and delays with nintendo are almost never bad they almost never mean anything bad so what what i could see happening with it is like i can see like parts of it just not being as good but for the most part i think it's going to be a very polished clean nintendo like game i'm just really and it's worried going to have good parts to i'm it. really worried about the controls i'm really worried it's not going to work the way that they want it to um that they're going to really focus on the gamepad and it's just not like making games that use the gamepad is not what Nintendo needs right now. They they have now moved past the point that they need to advertise the gamepad as a reason to buy a Wii U. They need to yeah. Like the Wii U is not important anymore. Just make good games and that's just keep us keep us satisfied until the end of the year when we get NX. Um, I think it'll be good. Speaking of which, we're five days into the new year. Nintendo, where's our NX news? Jerks. I'm just, I'm just kidding. You know, I, I was almost expecting it right away. I, I was like, yeah, as soon as it hit midnight, where's our announcement, Nintendo? They said they're waiting to 2016, but 
Has not happened yet. Uh, it's going to happen. There's just going to be like one day surprise Nintendo Direct later today. Yeah. And then bam. It's not going to be Nintendo um, Direct. They're going to reveal it at like CES or something to, to some huh. devs or something later on this month. But uh, Uncharted 4 got delayed, actually. It was coming out in March. Now it's coming out in April, which, of course, delay is always good. Um, it's a shame. This is the conclusion of Nathan Drake's adventures. Yeah, until it makes billions of dollars and then they decide to make another one. Well, well, I should say it's it's the last one that Naughty Dog will make. Yeah, so it's It'll, the last good one for sure. Yeah, <laughs> there there might be a okay one after this one, but this is definitely going to be like the last great Uncharted game. Um, then we have Battleborn, which is a uh, Gearbox uh, type like Borderlands. Uh, my boss is at work is obsessed with Borderlands, so I know she's gonna buy this. Oh, I actually know nothing about Battleborn. It looks after that we have the game <laughs> that. It. Yeah. After that, we have the game that You're gonna I hate. was looking forward to so much, but now I've completely written off the uh, publisher and developer behind it because they're going to ruin it with microtransactions or some junk garbage like that. Mirror's Edge Catalyst. EA. EA game. Yep. It's going to be awful. Yeah. Like, there's no question, right? Like, it's just... Yeah. I think, I think it will have greatness that is just going to be drowned out by a bunch of crap. Like, I don't want it on Xbox One. I don't want it on PlayStation 4. I want it on PC. So, boom, right away, I'm going to have to use Origin. I'll tell you what. I have not used Origin since I installed that stuff on my computer for Battlefield 3. And that was enough for me to know that I was never going to buy an EA game on my PC ever again. So, I don't know what I'm going to do about Mirror's Edge Catalyst. So let's move on. Uh, now we skip from, <laughs> yeah. we skip from May all the way to the end of the summer months with August 23rd, a game that has been a virtual PR dumpster fire, uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Uh, it got delayed from February, which is another, you know, PR design, like nightmare, after they had the whole pre-order thing, like customize your pre-order by getting certain pre-order bonus, like you pick your pre-order bonus. And like, if enough yeah. if enough people pre-order, we'll release it early. And just like all this weird, stupid crap that didn't make any sense, and completely backfired. It, it did not work. And thank goodness it got delayed. It's just going to get pushed completely into the background by all the games that are going to be coming out like in late in mid mid August and early September. So, what games? There's nothing coming. There's out There's nothing then. been announced yet, but there's going to be a lot. Like now, now we're moving into all these games that are, have been announced for 2016 but have no release date yet. And there's a lot of good ones, honestly, that don't have... Which, of course, these are going to be the ones that get delayed to 2017, but... Say what you want. I'm incredibly excited for Deus Ex, Mankind Divided. Uh, Square Enix has been on a roll making great games that are not bogged down in microtransactions and other nonsense like that. Yeah, they have a little bit of it still. And Mankind Divided got off to a bad start (laughs) with the pre-order thing. But I think in the grand scheme of things, it's going to be a really, really, really good game, and it's not going to have too much crap. Um, so, so we got a few more games here. These do not have release dates, so take it with a grain of salt. Most of them we know are coming out this year, though. Uh, like yeah. Bravely Second and Layer for 3DS, just the sequel to Bravely Default. Uh, you're really excited about that one, right? Eh, no. No? I thought you liked they- Bravely Default. I bravely default did some things right and it did some things not right like the characters the story just such a snooze fest and it it stinks because like they have some pieces in place with like the battle system and whatnot and I don't know it's just not there it's it's solid it has like some awesome music and the art direction is really really good but like if there's not great characters there and like the exploration just doesn't really grab you i don't know what is what what is there so maybe they'll improve those with bravely second who knows um doom uh they showed it off at bethesda's e3 press conference last year i'm not interested people complained about it being slow and having too many uh unskippable cutscene type animations i'm sure that it will be bad um final fantasy 15 another game that i'm sure will be bad uh, or at least we'll be, no, you know what? It's going to be great, but everyone's going to hate what? it. What? I'm, I'm actually after Final Fantasy 13 was just, oh gosh, Final Fantasy 13 was awful, but 15, what it has for me is like a lot of people sort of ripped on, oh, it's just a dude bro game. Like all these guys driving around in a car. This is 
this is just so cheesy and whatever. I love it. Like, I feel like they're going to do a great job uh, with just character development in it. So that's why I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be cool. Um, I, I just all the all Final Fantasy games hate every or all Final Fantasy fans hate every Final Fantasy game. So I don't know. I just don't think they're going to like it. Um, yeah, we'll see. But the game's probably going to be good. Uh, a game that I'm almost positive now, and I, I was I started off being really positive about this game earlier last year uh, is Gears of War 4. I'm now almost totally convinced it's going to be garbage. And I don't really even know why. I just sort of have convinced myself. Cause... <laughs> because, because so many games these days we just don't like. That's why. Yeah, and like people didn't like Gears of War 3. And I'm just like, you know what? As much as I love the first Gears of War, I don't think they're, I don't think I'm going to like any of the other ones, which is a shame. I think this is the first one made by Coalition, like the, other than the remake. Yeah, and it's but... a new developer, too. So I don't know. We'll see how it works out. Uh, Hopefully it's good. Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm pretty sure it's going to get delayed. Um, we haven't really seen it. I'm almost certain Horizon will be delayed. We haven't really seen anything on this game since E3, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. It looks awesome. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, it looks. It, it's a PS4 exclusive, so they got that going for them. Hey, they're finally going to have some exclusives in 2016. Um, as I continue to rip the PS4 for having no games. Now three years into its life cycle. Hey, it has those multi-platform titles and Bloodborne. <laughs> whoop the frickin do congratulations oh you also get maps for call of duty 30 days early did you see that uh, infinity ward was kind of teasing call of duty ghosts too no yeah uh, they they posted something on twitter that's like this guy is gonna have a really happy new year and it was like a character from i don't play call of duty so whatever but it was a character from ghosts and i'm like they're really not gonna they're not gonna do ghosts too this year are they uh, so speaking of two um, so yeah for those for those of you who are just joining us for this episode by the way if you haven't figured it out we hate everything we are not big fans of this generation of games um specifically with with what's going on in the playstation 4 and the xbox one and we both own xbox ones right yeah yeah well, i mean do. i threw mine away yesterday but uh, yeah i like <laughs> <laughs> I just threw it right in the trash because I'm like, you know what? We, My cat. We both sort of hate our Xbox Ones. Uh, like, I ha I've had mine for barely over a year. Controller already broke. I'm just livid. My cat that has turned on my Xbox One in the last two weeks more than I have accidentally by like rubbing up <laughs> against it. That's a true story. I believe it. I love it. I love it. But like, yeah, we just don't like microtransactions and season passes and. I don't know. And, you know, stuff that people don't, on. the stuff that smart people don't like, you know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's because it's, they're, these companies, they're so obsessed with um, their bottom lines that they're just like, you know what? We're going to make a game that like is, has just, or it's, it's a really, really good game, but it has just a little bit of crap in it so that we can pull in that 1% of people that just love spending money and have a huge amount of disposable income. Yeah. And it's going to piss off everybody else. But we're just going to take a needle, inject it right into that game. And, and you know, it's it's not even that, like, the company isn't... Like, I'm going to let the company be obsessed with their bottom line. That's totally fine. If they're make, if, I want the companies to make a profit. So make a game that's going to make a profit. You know, don't don't keep gouging us for more and more money once you've already made that huge star wars battlefront has sold 12 million copies already and they're wanting to charge 50 dollars for a season pass it's just a it's a joke and just think I about how it. many people are buying that season pass poor those poor people Ugh. you could use that 50 dollars to like feed a child in africa for a month you jerks ea yeah. causing world hunger so yeah we're not fans of that but uh we have some more games to we talk about, We just lost right? so many viewers. I know. I compared EA to like, starving children in Africa. Um, yeah. Another, the Last Guardian. Another PS4 exclusive, The Last Guardian. But it's going to be delayed, so I don't even know why we're saying it's going to come out in 2016. Yeah, it was supposed to come out in, like, 2009, but, you know, that didn't it, happen. It was supposed to come out in, like, 2008 you know, I, PlayStation 3. I bought a PlayStation 3 for the sole purpose of buying Team Eco's next game. Well, a lot of good that did. So I watched the I went through and I watched the the trailer for Last Guardian again from P, uh, from Sony's E3 press conference this year, and I really get the hype. I mean, it looks cool, but I don't really understand what you do in it. And it, it's because it's a team eco game. That's entirely why. It just looks like a thing that you kind of watch and it happens, and it's like okay. 
Um, that it's it's really just one of those games that's riding the coattails of the previous success of that developer. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, uh, the Legend of Zelda on Wii U, which oh, which we gosh. know nothing about, and and everyone's really hyped about, and I don't care. I want it. The less we hear about it, the more uncomfortable I get. I'm like, what is going on with this game? Every every single time I see video of that game, I just want to go outside and start eating grass. That's great, but are you aware that we only got 13 seconds of said video in 2015? 13 seconds of new Zelda U footage. Yeah, and it was enough for me to go to the store and buy some organic grass. Like grass <laughs> and then i put it in a smoothie it was delicious well we just lost okay. we just lost the rest of our viewers uh the rest of them are gone <laughs> uh some more sequels mafia 3 bah. uh nah. coming out mass effect andromeda which just lost one of its directors i don't know if it was the like lead director of the game or not yeah that, um, that's gonna get delayed right it, it's it, that's, that's it's gonna be that's not good news to lose a director in a game ugh. it's just like when sonic boom was coming out and uh, the first one, and like news came out two months before launch that everybody had either quit or been fired from Big Red Button. I was like, oh yeah, that's a good sign right there. Yep, uh, Metroid Prime Federation Force, which everybody hates. Everybody hates. It's not a but it's gonna be good. Metroid game. It's gonna be good though, so you can all suck it when it is. I, that's my official prediction. Is, by the way, it, is that it's gonna, I, it's gonna I be really good. It will be a fun game, it. but it's gonna flop horribly oh that's my sure. prediction for sure it'll be a little it'll be like a typical like little fun nintendo game but complete flop no man's sky the big space exploration game that i, I still haven't bought into i i am not I, buying into this game until i see the reviews i just i don't oh. i don't trust that it's going to be interesting enough to just kind of walk around and like see stuff it worked in xenoblade chronicles x but that's because there's stuff you're supposed to be doing. I, I don't know if there's a goal in No Man's Sky. If they turn it into Xenoblade Chronicles there X, is it's going to be awesome. There is a goal. I'm just... I don't know. I, I don't... I'm starting to get a little bit tired of uh, procedurally generated games. Um, I, I feel like more can get added to a game if the if it's just sort of like under control and the assets and like those those really good points of interest are created more by hand and sp like in specific places I agree. to el elicit a like specific response from the gamer and i would like to say how absolutely incredible it is that xenoblade chronicles x was designed by a human being because that game is so big and there's so many different environments and like there's not a view in that game that you are not thinking wow this is gorgeous to look at uh i i haven't played xenoblade chronicles x in a while because i kind of got away from it while while chris was visiting me but um it's just <laughs> it's so fantastic it makes me choke ow i still need to get around to it i'm just intimidated by I it i don't blame you at all um so speaking of gigantic uh -huh. RPGs, one of my like top three most anticipated games for next year, which actually got delayed, uh, was Persona 5. It's coming out on both PS4 and PS3. Um, which is great, because then I don't have to buy a PlayStation 4. I think I'm going to buy a PS4 for it anyway. Um, even as much as I hate the PS4, it does have some good-looking games that are coming out this year. I want to play Uncharted. I want to play Until Dawn. I want to I try Bloodborne and see what I can make of it. Uh, I want I want to get it for Kingdom Hearts three. I'd rather play Kingdom Hearts three on a Sony controller. It just feels right, you know. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna buy a PS4 probably for Persona five and get some other games with it. Oh uh, man, we're almost done. Um, Pokemon. So much. I'm try I'm trying to avoid getting all three consoles this generation, just like last generation. Uh, Pokemon tournament is coming out on Wii U. Uh, I think it has a release date. I'm not sure why it doesn't have one on this list, but. Um, Pokemon Tournament, it looks good. Um, I'm not into fighting games. I probably won't even buy it, but I'm glad that uh, it's the Wii U's filling a much needed hole uh, with fighting games with this release. Yeah, and it's a good it's a good game for those um, Pokemon fans. And here's an interesting stat for you, by the way. Uh, the only um, you know Pokemon games they always sell a crap ton, right? Uh, yep. The lowest selling Pokemon game, like bearing the Pokemon name on it, is Pokemon Channel. And it sold 380,000 units. And it's not even a game. I don't even know what it is. I've, I've, I I've played it, and I'm just like, I don't get it. Yeah, I I would bet that Pokemon Tournament sells at least 1 million copies. Oh, no question. And considering it's already been made and is like out in arcades, it's, it's pretty much free money for Nintendo. 
Yeah, I think it's going to be a huge success, like a big surprise. Like this, this game's going to come out and retailers aren't going to anticipate the demand and they're all going to be sold out. So make sure you get your copy. You know, if you want to get it, get it on day one, because otherwise you probably won't be able to get it for a while. Um, and the next game, the big one that I think we are both really looking forward to. I am to. very hyped. Recore for the Xbox One. Made um, by the uh, the dev team, um, the original like people who made Metroid Prime, uh, the people yes. who eventually left Retro Studios and they went on to form their own studio, and now they work for Microsoft, uh, making this exclusive uh, called Recore, which was announced in the middle of their uh, E3 press conference last year. And remember, when we were watching it, we, we flipped out together simultaneously it was like from the makers of metroid prime um but apart from that what they showed wasn't really that impressive but i think i'm gonna try to go on media blackout for this one yeah we don't know anything about it and i think it'd be kind of cool if we kept it that way until the, like the game comes out and then i'll look at reviews and if it's anything over a nine i'll get it a couple more all right smtx fire emblem Shin Megami Tensei. So for those of you who don't know, I'm a big fan of Persona 4. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei is the series that spawned Persona 4, so it's basically the same type of thing. I own Shin Megami Tensei 4 on 3DS, have not played it. I own Fire Emblem Awakening on 3DS, have not played it. I'm very excited <laughs> for this game because of the J-pop and the, the waifus. <laughs> All about the waifus. Uh, and I, we thought this I'm game... I'm sort of excited for it. I don't... I don't know. I'm... I'm I'm worried that I'm not going to want to pay full price for it. Well, too bad because it's going to be full price, and then when it gets know, and then when it gets super Nintendo rare because it's a Fire Emblem game and it's super rare, it's going to be like ninety dollars. So yep. Uh, then we have another big Kickstarter game, indie game, Ukulele. Very high uh, profile. From the creators of Banjo Kazooie, correct? Um, no. I wait. I thought it was. I don't know, but it's the same type of game. Uh, David Wise. I thought it was the creators of Banjo Kazooie are making it, and then like they have the soundtrack coming from David Wise. Yeah, you're right. Who... You're right. Yeah, David Wise is doing the soundtrack. Uh, the game is it's basically Banjo Kazooie with a lizard and a freaking um, like bat thing. So. Yep. That's exactly what it I'm is. I'm so excited. I love Banjo Kazooie, so, as you know. I'm not the biggest fan of the art direction for it. But I'm, I'm really interested oh, to am. see how it plays out. I am. It looks like one of those old-time N64 platformers, just up res textures. I can't wait. But I think there's just there's a huge need for games like Ukulele. And it's funny, right? Know, the Ratchet and Clank game that's going to come out this year. As inundated as the industry was with character platformers where all you do is collect things in the early 2000s, there's like none now. The, yep. There are absolutely zero that came out in. There 2015. aren't even really any platformers anymore. Like not 3D ones. Is, no. Where where's the Super Mario 64 platformer out there? I want it. How long has it been since we've had a 3D Mario platformer that's not? Because 3D World doesn't really count, right? I mean, it counts. No, it counts. Nobody. Well, it's a 3D platformer, but it doesn't really count. It lacks. Like again, I talk about exploration. Yeah, it does not have exploration. like sense of discovery and all that stuff. That's not in there. It has cool worlds, not, for sure. Yeah. But it's not even Mario just, Galaxy 2. Well, I don't even know if you can say it has, like, real worlds. It has levels. That's what it has. Very good levels. That, that's a very, yeah. good, very good game, uh, Mario 3D World. but It's a fantastic game. It's just not... It's just not that classic 3D Mario, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, last game. Last game on our list. Ooh, maybe my most anticipated game for next year. And you all know what it is because we've been going alphabetically. And we're on to Z, which stands for Zero Escape. Zero Escape 3, Zero Time Dilemma is what it's called. And if you haven't played the Zero Escape games, just stop listening to this show and just go play them because they're great. And that oh, I better go now. That includes you. So I'm just yeah. going to end the show now by myself. Show's over. I got to go play Zero Escape. Yeah. Um, but th uh, they, they've basically revealed very little about the story, which is good. I'm going to replay the games before the game comes out. It's supposed to be like a summer release. It feels like a kind of a July type. Uh, that's the release window, I think they said, was like July 2016. So the wait is almost over, everybody. All the big fans of Zero Escape out there, aside from me. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. That's a lot of games coming out this and year. And they're all going to be just terrible, aren't they? Like, of all those <laughs> games, how many are you genuinely excited about? Um... If I had okay, I'm gonna do a quick rundown of the games that like I'm actually legitimately interested in getting. Okay, of the games on that list, and that would be Fire Emblem Fates. Okay. sometime down the road, I'm interested in getting uh, Twilight Princess HD just so I can play it without the waggle. 
Uh, Star Fox Zero, I'm interested in getting. Uh, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, I am interested in. Final Fantasy XV, I am interested in. And uh, Legend of Zelda U, I am interested in. And ReCore. So you skipped. If, you skipped. If ReCore uh, comes out this year, I sort of don't think ReCore is going to come out this year. But. You skipped Uncharted, um, which was interesting to me because I remember when they first announced it and they first showed that gameplay trailer, you were the one who was like all over it and you're like, guys, look at this trailer. It's so amazing. It looks. See, the thing is, is I want to play Uncharted 4. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I really want to play Uncharted 4. But I am skipping the PlayStation 4 this generation. I've just flat out decided I'm not getting a PlayStation 4. Such a hater. There's Look at all the good games. You've got. It's going to have the classic. Uh, Heavy Rain Sony is coming out on PS4, out. man. Yeah, and like I really want to play Horizon Zero Dawn, and I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I guess I'm just going to have to suffer with my Wii U and Xbox One games. Get it at the end of the generation. Oh, drat. Just get it at the well, end. You have a 360, don't you? Yes. But you. No, I don't have a 360. I completely skipped 360, and I'm really glad I did because well, yeah. essentially everything on the 360 that was like great is either something i can play on my computer or it is now something that i can play on my xbox yeah because it's like, backwards I can compatible. Play all the halo games on my xbox one alan wake can, is backwards compatible uh gears of war is backwards compatible yeah plus the remake and yeah. what, what else is there i don't know like, i think fable? that's it i'm looking at my I, I mean i guess there's fable but like eh, that's also backwards compatible actually actually i think the fable games are available on uh pc too so it's there's really nothing there. Cameo elements of power. That's on rare replay. Uh, yeah, rare yeah replay. so if you so basically if you still have an Xbox 360, you're an idiot. Um, yeah. <laughs> so sorry. Um, even even when I got my Xbox One, I was like, oh great, what games are they going to come out like release on their backwards compatibility? And I'm looking at the list, and everybody's like, oh man, backwards compatibility. Look at all these games that we're going to be able to play. Fallout 3. I'm like, oh, I played that on computer these games are all uh -huh. awful everyone's like oh the backwards compatibility it's like i have not played an xbox 360 game on my xbox one the in fact i dug out my 360 again this week because i got obsessed with rock band again uh someone <laughs> someone brought a guitar in to uh to my store and they're like will you take this and i'm like no we don't we don't like buy that stuff but so they just left it there and i took it home and i've been playing rock band it's so good i love it and like yeah even the games that like the best ports came out on like uh the xbox 360 like maybe red dead redemption would be like one of the big xbox 360 games that i'd want to play on my xbox one well you can play it on ps3 though what you can play it on ps3 though it, it doesn't run as smoothly on ps3 oh. and that would be one reason to get it but like i already own it on peace place or playstation 3 and i also got it digitally on playstation 3 so i'm just sort of stuck with it oh okay but fair enough um, whatever. That's that's the Xbox One. So yeah, this show has gone on way too long. But uh, what's a little bit more, right? It's not too long. I think we should go for another two hours. So bottom line is, I don't think I, everyone's obsessed with 2016. And always remember, kids, keep your expectations tempered. That way, you'll never be disappointed. Or rather, when you are disappointed, you won't be like, "Well, I didn't see this coming." Uh, 2015 <laughs> was a really, really bad year. I feel like for games. Um, I. I when when your game of the year is a game that came out in, in May, what was your game of the year, by the way? Mine was Splatoon. Was yours Witcher? Mine is The Witcher 3. Yeah, bo oh my both gosh. came out in May, and uh, it's just nothing really came out after that that was really worth your time. Uh, everyone wants to talk about Fallout 4, but Fallout 4 is basically Fallout. What did come out? Uh, like Assassin's Creed, Fallout, Star Wars Battlefront, which is a which everyone bought, but I don't think anybody thinks is good. Maybe I'm wrong. If you like Star Wars Battlefront, go ahead and rip me a new one right now. But I, I just, I look at it and I just, see, I just get angry. So, actually, I don't think I've bought anything since like any of those new games. You bought Batman, right? When it came out in June. I bought Batman. Yeah. They are. We didn't Man. mention this. Telltale is releasing a Batman game next year. Oh my goodness. I'm sick and tired of these Telltale games. Go back to make Walking Dead season three or make nothing jerks <laughs> um i want to see what happens hey you didn't mention a lego marvel avengers coming out this year it's like the last 360 game right I, can we assume that they're going to do probably one more madden on 360 and ps3 and then like that's it i think yeah. they're done with call of duty on last gen um 
they kind of made that 10-year cycle. Yeah, they kind of made that evident by butchering Black Ops 3 on 360 and PS3 and including basically nothing um, and just ripping people off, basically, as a cash grab. Uh, oh, Activision bought Major League Gaming, so that's big news. I don't really care to talk about it because I hate Activision hmm. and Major League Gaming. Yeah. I Can I go on my rant now? Yeah, sure. Whatever. If people are still listening, keep listening. Yes. So, Piddle's rant. Rant of the day. Rant of the year. Or episode. I have now decided that I am done, completely done skis, with three of uh, pretty much gaming's biggest publishers. Ooh. Just done. I, I've decided that Electronic Arts, Activision, Ubisoft, you guys suck. You are dead <laughs> you're to either, me. You're either shoving Uplay and Origin down my throat, or you're shoving Season Passes down my throat. Or you're just creating games that it's a bunch of copy-pasted stuff and it's a gigantic world where I'm going to be doing the same freaking thing over and over. Really looking at you, Ubisoft, there. Ubisoft, you are horrible there. Like Far Cry, it's all the same. We're just whoring out your franchises and making 2.5D platformers that say Assassin's Assassin's Creed. Creed. Assassin's Creed Chronicles is coming out on Vita. And I'm like, we we were looking at the list. We're like, what is this game? We didn't, we never even heard of it. And apparently it's already been yeah. released like several times. Yeah. Yep. Franchise um, wars. I hate it. And then Electronic Arts, I hate you for all your season passes and Origin and definitely Origin. Um, <laughs> because you've just made like all their PC games are just like irrelevant to me. It, it, it kills me. Are you still going to buy Unravel? No. Wow. I think I'm going to buy Unravel. Like, well, I think I mentioned to you what 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 was my last Electronic Arts game? Um, oh, I can't remember. Ugh. I can't remember. Oh, like I want to say, it might have been Battlefield Three. Yeah, you're, like right, you're, right, you're right. You're right. You're right. It was after. Battlefield Three. No, 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 no. I did end up getting Need for Speed Hot Pursuit after Battlefield Three. That is the last Electronic Arts game. There is that a I new Battlefield game coming out this year, so everyone get excited about that. Believe it. I'm, believe it or not, there's another Battlefield coming out this year. God. I'm more likely to actually go back and buy like EA's classic PlayStation 2 games like uh, SSX Tricky. Oh my gosh, I would love to go back to playing that. Have you ever played or, uh, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets? Because that is the best movie game ever made. It is a Zelda game with Harry Potter skins. It's great. What? Yeah, dude, it's fantastic. I'm bringing it. What? I actually, you're gonna. Play I actually it. really looked at getting um Harry Potter and I think it's the Goblet of Fire. It might be the Order of the Phoenix. On the Wii, Order of the Phoenix um, was on Wii. And I heard it's they, good. They like, they like did a big like, made a big deal about doing the uh, wand controls and like they created all of Hogwarts for you to explore. And it's like the best Harry Potter game I've heard. And I've looked at like getting it. It's like seventy dollars. Dang, or something really? Like that. Yeah, which just tells you like yeah, it tells it you was, how good it it's is. It's like the defini- definitive. Uh, Harry Potter game, probably. Uh, Chamber, um, I will stick by Chamber of Secrets. I think it's fantastic. It's on GameCube. It's on PS2. It's on Xbox. You probably get it for really cheap on PS2. So, yeah. Electronic Arts, I'm done with you, especially because of those season passes. Ugh. They just... They sicken me. Sicken me. And then you've got Activision. And, I mean, Activision has won, like, worst company ever by Forbes or... Is it Forbes? I think it's Forbes. How many years in a row? That, that was EA who keeps winning that, but Activision is similarly bad. I thought it's been back and forth. Uh, it, it should be, arguably. Um, you know what? Weirdly, um, in the city that I live, which is Fresno, California, everyone come visit, um, we actually have an Activision branch here. I get a lot of people who come <laughs> to my store, and they're like, we work for Activision. I'm like, you work for Activision? And every, oh, every time I'm like, how does it feel working for the worst company of all time? You know? And then it, it but, kills me. But then they um, would respond with, "Well, I could ask you the same question." There is a uh, now. Now it's pretty much a subsidiary of Activision here in my. Uh, it's it's a suburb of my city, and that's all Raven Software, and they, man, they used to make like their own games, and now they are just a part of the Call of Duty machine. They pretty much do maps and whatnot, or the multiplayer modes of call of duty so yep activision just consumes everything activision is everywhere it's in my city it's in your city 
It might even be in your yeah. city, dear listener. So go find the Activision branch and go. <laughs> I don't know. Don't I, don't vandalize it because that's bad. Uh, what, what can we have them do? Go put effortless. I don't know. Like go print out a piece of paper that says effortless and just like post it everywhere because like this show is effortless. We could be bought by Activision with how much effort they put into their games. Gosh. So Activision, like boom, my big deal in. with them is sort of like Electronic Arts, the season passes that they keep shoving down our throats. And mostly that it's just, they just rehash the same things over and over and over again. And they drive series and franchises into the ground. Guitar Hero, I'm looking at you. Guitar Hero, um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. They ruined it. They had such a great franchise and they ruined it. They can never make another Tony Hawk game now because then everyone's going to be like, what about the last one? I don't think uh, Skylanders is going to be around much longer. I think it's on its last This is the last Skylanders, I think. Yeah. They drove. I think that's that's my opinion. I look at these uh, the sales of the interactive game figures, and we have to end this show at some point. But this is going to be my last thing. I look at the sales of interactive game figures, and they've really dropped off this year. Uh, we don't sell Skylanders. Period. Um, I've sold maybe Whoa. three copies of Skylanders Superchargers this year. Every couple of weeks, I'll get some poor dad coming in looking for like a trap from Trap Team or something. Um, but we really don't sell Skylanders. Uh, and it's hmm. it's a shame because now these retailers, they're going to be the ones stuck with all the product that they can't sell. Uh, you reap what you sow, Activision. And and don't don't be surprised when, you know, if you try to put on another Skylanders in the future, if retailers balk and are like, we're not going to carry this because you shouldn't. That's going to happen. It's just like with uh, Guitar Hero and Rock Band. Um, we, th- these retailers, they were all stuck with these stupid plastic instruments that nobody yeah. wanted, and now we don't even want to sell them. Like we, I think I got um, the like complete. Uh, I think it was Legends of Rock, Guitar Hero Legends of Rock. Right. I got like the complete set for like thirty dollars, like drums, guitar, microphone, game. I got everything for thirty dollars, and I think it cost like one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, when it first the came retailers out. can't get rid of it fast enough. And it's it's just yeah it's like and, I said and it's so the the thing is the boxes are so big and bulky they're just like we have to get rid of it like it just takes up too much space we have to get rid of this stuff the the number of rock bands that we had in our back room during holiday season like literally took up probably an eighth of the room it was ridiculous it was just there were so many it was like get these out of here we so we put them all on the floor and people would like lean on them and like spill their drinks on them and it was just like so these rock <laughs> boxes are just destroyed it's hilarious um oh man yeah, that's great uh so i think we should wrap things up but yeah i'm done with those publishers if you think i'm crazy go ahead argue with me i'll argue back with you yeah i want to see you in the comments more this year for sure hey i sort of started to get into the comments yeah, no, you a did you more. did a good job i just want to see more of it yeah um so oh. welcome back to effortless geez what a freaking episode we just did that was a monster but welcome back uh the the for, for your reference most effortlesses are shorter than this but we were just having so much fun it didn't feel right to stop so nope but now we're not having fun anymore so we're gonna stop thank you for listening everybody <laughs> if you uh if you like the show um just i don't know leave a comment just subscribe subscribe to us and i'm gonna ask you guys i'm gonna ask you to do me a big favor if you have friends that like video games, we are no longer covering like just Nintendo. We're talking about everything. I don't know if you noticed today. We're talking about a lot of different games. Share this show with your friends. I think they might really like it and they might like us. And I think that'd be cool if people liked me in real life. So, Or they'll just really like to argue with us. Yeah, and that's good enough. I don't really care if people like us. Yeah.